Welcome to the Sawtooth Mountains in central Idaho. Heather and I drove 13 hours to sleep in these yurts, hang out with our best friends, and to ski these slopes. Join HD Adventuring for a week of epic sunsets, deep powder, and lots of laughs as we settle in to yurt life. Every year since 2015, skipping one year for COVID-19, our group of friends gets together for a few days of skiing in the dead of winter. We drive or fly from all over the country to make this trip happen and is often the highlight of our year. So the skin up to the yurt is about a five mile skin, about a mile in. It's mostly flat at the beginning and then about halfway through it starts to kick up in terms of elevation. I think there's about 1,500 feet of climbing on this, so not too bad, other than the fact that we all have about 50 to 60 pound bags on our backs, because of course, we need to take everything. So I feel like most folks who like to go outside fall into one of two camps. The ultralight folks who over time, as they get more and more experience in the outdoors, bring less and less, so they can go faster. And then the folks who decide over time, as they get more and more experience, that they want to bring more and more gear. This group is definitely in the latter category. Last year, we had Poke Bowls. We had a very fancy Bloody Mary bar with bacon and pickles and all sorts of other fancy stuff. This year, the group has lots and lots of food, fancy hot chocolate drink mixes, uh, plenty of wine and fruit. So uh, we are not packing light, that is for sure. Halfway up to the yurt, the group stopped for lunch and to take in the glorious views as the fog lifted over the sawtooths. The group gains the ridge and skins the last couple miles to the yurt together under giant Douglas firs adorned with moss and snowy lichen. We arrive to the yurt and start making ourselves at home. We take off our stinky ski boots, build a fire, and get our bunks ready. After we get settled in, the cook team for the first night brings out the appetizers and the wine starts flowing. We catch up on one another's lives since we last saw each other in the desert a few months prior. We get the yurt nice and toasty, and I'm sure if we all weren't acclimated to it, we would have noticed the stench of smoke and sweat. The next morning we're woken up by a brilliant sunrise and we are reminded why we've traveled so far to this special place. We cram our feet into our wood stove heated ski boots and head out for a tour as a group. One of my favorite things about this group is how we make it work with a wide ranging level of experiences. We can't all link beautifully symmetric powder turns like Tanner or charge lines like Andrew. Some of us are new to skiing while others have a bit more experience, but we always find ways to enjoy our time outside together.
After spending three days in the yurt, we've started to grow accustomed to the pace of life up here. The lack of a cell phone signal or electricity means it's up to us to entertain ourselves. The lack of a heating system or running water means that any water we use must be melted over the stove from wood that we need to split. Oh, right. And then there's the tandem outhouse, which helps us all connect at a level deeper than we thought possible. We also understand the joys of self-reliance even more while we're up here. We repair Tanner's binding so that he's able to ski down. I'm sure he'll use that binding with our bush repair for at least five more seasons of guiding. And while we're on the topic of backcountry repairs, here's a little wisdom from the group's most <clears throat> seasoned mechanic. Yeah. Well, uh, sometimes when you're sending it super hard at the ski resort in your touring boots that are a decade old, um, they, they don't hold up so much. So what you have to do is take about five zip ties, preferably orange, because that has more holding power, um, and use those to reconnect the parts of the tongue that are no longer connected. And once you've done that, you can reinforce with shoe goo because that's got strength and flexibility, which is really everything you can hope for out of an adhesive. So um, yeah, between the shoe goo and the zip ties, uh, this is now like a 130 flex ski boot and uh, you can send it harder than you've ever sent it before. So. At some point, while taking in yet another incredible sawtoothed sunset, I reflected on just how lucky we are to be able to find the time to spend in such a magical spot with such a great cast of characters. Making a trip like this happen is not easy, but the time, money, and sweat invested more than pays off once you're enjoying it. The fact that many of our best friends feel the same and are willing to put the effort in to make this trip come to fruition is a testament to how important making the time to connect in nature truly is. This year, we were missing a couple of people who normally attend this shindig. For various reasons, they could not make the journey to the middle of nowhere to spend three days with this smelly band of miscreants. While we miss them dearly, their absence made room for some new folks to join, which injected new energy into the crew. Hopefully next year we can assemble an even larger group with old friends and new. And for that, we're going to need a bigger yurt. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing to the HD Adventuring channel so you can be notified of all the new content that we put out. Thanks!